It's track reviews. Having a wonderful Christmas time. Uh, hi, everyone. Anthony Fangino here. The internet's busiest music nerd, and it's that time of year. It's it's December. We only have so many shopping days left to go before a quarantine Christmas. Now, uh, one blessing in disguise about this whole thing, this whole situation that we find ourselves in right now, is that I guess it's less likely that I will be out and about and uh, hearing uh, the song that I'm about to talk about playing over uh, speakers and malls and shopping centers and so on and so forth. Of course, I'm talking about a track that uh, if you're a longtime fan of the show, you know by now I absolutely detest this song. I harbor so much dislike for this track that uh, it, it just uh, flows out of me in every direction. Anytime it's mentioned or it's played, just a look of disgust is on my face. And, and sometimes something may even need to be said. But of course, I'm talking about uh, Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time. Now, look, uh, this track and this particular song, it does not uh, impact or influence my overall feelings on the fantastic body of work, uh, generally, that we're uh, talking about in Paul McCartney's canon. You know, even the greatest artists out there uh, put out some duds every once in a while. It's uh, a thing. It's a thing. I'm going to expose myself to this track once more for science uh, in order to get kind of like a raw reaction and uh, some specific descriptions about uh, particular things about the song that I find to be grating and uh, very much a turnoff. So uh, I will do that. But before I dive into that, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, the good people over at The Ridge. They make these awesome nifty metal plated wallets that fit nicely in your front pocket. Uh, hit up the link down below and use promo code MELON to get 10% off of your order. Uh, yeah, they're super sleek, RFID blocking as well, and uh, they're pretty rugged too. Check it out. Check it out, check it out. All right, uh, without any further ado, I think I'm ready to dive into this track and go into what exactly uh, uh, rocks me to my core with this song, Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time. Let's go. <laughs> I am still bewildered at the popularity of this song, the lasting popularity of this song. I, j I don't, I just don't know where it comes from. I, I really don't. I mean, I, I guess there's a lot to be said for maybe the, uh, the severe lack of decent modern Christmas songs, uh, to where, you know, we, uh, continually need to replay this and, um, uh, Mariah Carey's uh, All I Want for Christmas, which you know is a great track, you know, has, has aged perfectly over the years. But um, I don't know. I, I just find uh, this track aesthetically to just be hideous and not really be like reminiscent of Christmas to me at all outside of maybe just the very atmospheric wintry tones droning in the background and the very faint like bells ringing, which mind you, if this is playing over the speaker at like, you know, a shopping center, you're not even fucking hearing those bells. It's really kind of like the key elements of the song, the vocals and the synths and the tune that really draw people to the track. And I just don't know why. I mean, for one, the synthesizers are terrible. They sound like trash. They sound like garbage. And I, I get that, you know, we're talking about some vintage synths and some vintage production here. And this was made during Paul McCartney's, you know, two era, which uh, is an infamously, you know, kind of rough around the edges uh, sort of album, but I just don't really feel like it complements the song or really just kind of the, the, the Christmas spirit in a way. It sounds more like a crazy tune a hermit sings in his head uh, than it does a Christmas song that a large group of people or like a family sings together. But again, um, those synthesizers and kind of the squelchy splashy quality that they have, uh, I think is just terrible. Uh, plus the thudding, uh, very thin and muddy kick drums that, uh, 
are kind of lightly pulsating uh, away in the back, I think uh, don't really have much push to them. I think they're almost a non-factor. And the multi-tracked vocals that Paul lays onto this track are just so close to each other. Again, it sort of sounds like a man singing with the voices in his head. <laughs> it, do- it doesn't ring to me as Christmas. It just makes me worry about the, the state of the person who-, who made the song. Then there's the vocal melody on the hook, which I, I can't stand. I think is actually one of my least favorite vocal melodies of all time when it comes to generally popular and I, I guess societally accepted music. Simply heaven. Like, what is that progression? And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure there's like a lot of interpretations that people have of it. You know, simply heaven. And I've heard heaven. You know, but the thing is, the way it's recorded, it's a little muddy. And the way it's performed, it, it just seems like a little messy. It hits my ears in such a bitter and sour way. It doesn't like feel warm to me or inviting. Simply <laughs> Then what's even odder are why on the chorus, especially on the first chorus, like why are the synths stuttering? Why are they stuttering? Like the synth phrase is already annoying on its own, but then as the song progresses, the synths then have to be skipping in like this triplet succession that adds nothing to the original groove of the track whatsoever. It's just really disorienting. Like when the synths start just bouncing off of each other because of that delay or whatever the hell it is, um, I I just want to have a fit. It's just... (laughs) My brain starts to short circuit. I just, I really have no idea where Paul was trying to take the instrumental in that moment, especially considering like there's so little to it to begin with. And, you know, the loudest aspects of the track are already the synths, which are really kind of like keeping the pace, keeping the rhythm and the vocals. If you needed to change it in that moment, you could have added any number of things, but Paul just decided to keep it very rough and uh, uh, very rudimentary. And I don't know. I mean, to me, after all these years, um, wonderful Christmas time to me just sounds like a bad demo. It just sounds like a really bad demo that at some point should have been added onto, should have been changed, or should have been given a better performance or recording, but it just hasn't, and everyone just accepts it the way it is, and I don't know why. I think the only cute or endearing portions of the track are some of those descending lines that pop in as he's singing about oh, the children's chorus sing this song you know i mean that's that's a very cute christmasy type of vocal line uh, which i think is is just not part of the chorus for much of what's going on here it it just sounds like christmas on a budget and in a little i don't know lazy and maybe slightly manic as well especially when you're talking about and i don't know how much discussion there is about this like the solo at the end the solo at the end is like slightly demented. I, I don't, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. You know, it's, it's strange to me that a song like this can be as popular as it is. And yet simultaneously, there isn't like uniform mainstream praise and worship of a guy like, I don't know, Ariel Pink or R. Stevie Moore, because, you know, I mean, this, this sounds like a song they would write. And obviously this track precedes Ariel's work. Uh, not, not R. Stevie's though. He's been doing his thing for quite a while, though a lot of his work is a uh, very Beatles influence. But having said that, like this weird vintage home recording shit, which uh, I think has its time, its context, and its place. And certainly there have been a lot of fantastic artists who have gone down this route and have made some great material. And hell, I think there are some really good and experimental and just out there songs on this very Paul McCartney album. Temporary Secretary is uh, actually one of my favorite solo Paul tracks, if I'm being honest. But uh, as, as much as I like that track, I'm not so much sure I want the oddity and the aesthetic and the, the the mental and emotional vibe of that song and the context that that song was made in, like crossing over into my Christmas tracks. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, that, that's that's kind of what it feels like. I mean, I, I I don't get how people can find this song so catchy and 
and so Christmassy because whenever I hear it, it seems like there's these weird, subtle, underlying characteristics to it that are honestly just unsettling and awkward. Like it's not a comforting song to me. It's not a song that says to me like, yeah, hanging with the family. Yeah. Opening presents. Yeah. Sitting by the fire. Yeah. Bundling up and being cozy. You know, to me, it just reads as, uh, being very awkward and lonely and messy. And, uh, (laughs) I, I I really don't know. I really don't know. This is just not a, a Christmassy song to me as, as much as the lyrics, uh, uh, may, uh, represent that. And I guess I don't have a huge issue per se with the lyrical end of things, but, uh, on the vocal and instrumental end of things, this track is just a total and complete mess to me. And I just don't enjoy the way it sounds at all. And, uh, I don't really enjoy, especially that vocal melody, especially, uh, uh, some of the compositional elements of it. Simply heaven. It's just, ugh, ugh, what a sharp, just what a sharp, hideous ascent. Um, but I don't know. That's, that's me. I know I personally have uh, very specific issues with this track that many people don't, but uh, I, I just had to get my feelings out there because I, I do get pressed on uh, my dislike of this song quite often. And, and this is what it is. This is what it is. These are my feelings. Here's the tea. I've spilled it. I've spilled that tea. And I feel like that's that's where I need to leave it. And that's all I can say. Um, so I, I hope that you guys are simply having a wonderful December time. And, uh, you know, if you love this song and you have loved this song and it matters to you and it's important to you, you know, just go ahead and jam it. Ignore what little old Anthony Fantano says and uh, <laughs> just go on enjoying it. You know, just go on having a wonderful Christmas time. Okay. Uh, You guys are the best. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Paul McCartney, wonderful Christmas time forever.